the last of the cowboys to giddy up gone, boys. Eighteen wheels on the concrete, it's a slow and dying breed. Rolling like Jesse James, a modern day outlaw game. If you're out here riding with me, come on back and make some noise. We're the last of the cowboys. something with car haulers and I always tell them it's a it's a it's about the opportunity um, sometimes uh, things don't work out as well as I'd like to be able to do things with people but we have a, a great opportunity today to do uh, a, a video with a, a gentleman that's running a, a fabulous looking car hauler parking lot uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself my name is Eric Turner Turner Transport Truck Lines out of uh, Ellenwood Georgia 15 Peterville 389 or the 2018 Wallamo A car hauler. Parking lot, car hauler, however you want to call it. Now you've been uh, around on the, the show circuit for a while and uh, you're no stranger to uh, to what's going on in the world of trucking. So it's, uh, it's my pleasure to be out here and uh, get you on here as the first car hauler on uh, Big Rig Videos. Uh, I'm very excited to be on the Chris. All my car hauler fans have been asking about it. So, car hauler nation, here I am. I'm here to represent us. Why don't you tell us how how long you've been trucking for and how you got into trucking? I'm um, Chris. I've been trucking 21 years now. I started um, pretty much right out of high school. I graduated in 1995 and I didn't want to go off to college. And, uh, I wanted to start working with my parents over at the garage. and. That wasn't what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be a grease monkey, so I pretty much fell off into the car hauling field, and this is where I'm at now. I, I, I fell in love with this, and uh, this is my pride and joy of trucking. So that's pretty much how I fell off into it. I always, I, I just, I like trucks. Well, I hear you. With all of the, the different um, aspects of trucking, the different opportunities, the different, uh, different freight and everything, uh, why did the hauling cars interest you? Uh, Chris, I love cars. I mean, I've I never done anything else but haul cars. So I actually started out with a, with a tow truck at first. That's what I really started out with, with a tow truck. And it gradually moved up from a tow truck up into a, um, a tractor trailer. I got tired of hauling two cars at one time, and I went from there and started off into hauling multiple cars, a four-car carrier, and from a four-car carrier on up until what we're rolling now. And that's pretty much how we actually start off into hauling cars. Well, that's pretty cool. So it's just a, a, a progressive, natural progressive way of expanding the business and I guess probably seeing a need, you know, and, and solving, that, uh, solving that need. That's pretty cool. I love doing it. Tell me about how you gained your experience over the years. Uh, when I started with the two-car rollback, um, there's a lot of other trial and error. I, I'm not going. To, I'm going to be straight and honest with it, Chris. I messed up a couple cars with a two-car rollback just starting out with, and when I progressively moved up from the two-car to the four-car, you know, just two-car came to the four-car, learning off the four-car, messed up a couple cars on the four-car. When I got to the, the big major truck part, I went to the railhead one day when I first bought it. And I went to the railhead and I was hauling turnback cars for Avis and the rental car fleets. And I went out there to the railhead one day and Chris, I just sit out there and I just loaded different, just put different cars on the trailer to see how it worked. I didn't have nobody to teach me. I, I just went trial and error on my own. Just, just, I just went, went for the flow. I, I hear you on that. It takes a 
it takes a lot to be able to admit your mistakes, especially in front of a, a large, you know, a large audience. And I'm just kind of curious. I mean, there's there's times where you know I'm filming something way back in the beginning. You forget to press record, so you for, you miss a scene. You can't. Sometimes you can't recreate certain things. But you said you messed up some cars. So what did that what did that mean that you you messed up a car? You know, with, with a scratch or something, or what was that? Chris, I'm gonna tell you like any car owner would tell you. If you have a car owner tell you he never damaged a car. He's not really telling the truth. Every car hauler has have messed up a car or two, one or two, three or four, five or six. I don't put some dents on some cars, on some hoods. Uh, I, I even hit a bridge before. I'm just going to be honest. I even hit a bridge before coming out of Ohio. So it's all trial and error. I mean, it's, it's, it's all trial. You just Sometimes you got to get out here and you got to go with the flow. And sometimes self-teach yourself. I'm like, I'm the type of person, I can't learn in a classroom for us reading a book with it. Somebody, I'm the person, I got to go out and do everything hands-on. So I'm a hands-on person, and I just had to get out here and just roll my sleeves up and get out here and, and, and just do it. That, that's pretty much how I learned how to do it, Chris. You know, there's nothing wrong with that either. So I, I appreciate your being forward, you know, forthright with that, you know, because... In some situations, some guys won't have the opportunity or they won't have anyone to, to teach them. They might have that desire. And so hearing, you know, hearing a guy like yourself, you know, out saying that you get out there and you just do it, especially putting yourself in a position where you can take your time and experiment and load different cars. And, you know, I remember times where, you know, when I worked on a job, uh, I would get out there and on, on heavy equipment and just figure out how things worked uh, in, a, in a situation where you know you're not going to damage anything and you have that time because now fast forward to when you actually need to do something and you're under pressure you can perform well and you're not going to uh, be afraid of uh, making mistakes because you've taken that time so that that's pretty cool so thanks for sharing that in this world sometimes you just got to be honest and that's, that's how i just learned i i, I love what i'm doing now just fast forward to where I'm at now, I have so many people, just so many car hauler people are calling me and ask me, hey, where do I put this car? How do I position this car? And I can pretty much be in the dead heart of sleep and somebody can call me and I can tell them how to do it in the dead heart of sleep. Tell them where to put what car at, what car to go here, where to, where to set their pins at on the trailer. And I already tell them what the height going to be and they're going to be good to go. This car hauling is pretty much is a special group of people. I mean, you probably can put 10 drivers out here and they want to haul cars, and I guarantee you only three of them will last. That's, and I'm talking about within six to eight months, only three of them will last because a lot of them can't deal with the, the physical part of it as walking the cars down at the auctions, even, not even at the auctions, sometimes at the plant walking cars down. The heat is killing you outside, rain, sleet, or snow and then you got to load the truck at the same time. A lot, a lot of people just can't deal with it. So you mentioned walking the, the cars down. So are you saying that um, you got to go find these cars somewhere? Yeah, we have to go find the cars. When we get to the railhead or get to the auction, they give you a bay number. You go to that bay number. And once you go to that bay, pretty much look for your VIN. Make sure you got a correct VIN. Walk around, make sure you don't got scratches because a lot of people don't know Damages can sometimes put you out of business in this car hauling game because and a lot of times we're not the one that's putting the damages on there. A lot of, a lot of the damage sometimes may come from the railhead or may come from, you know, just the manufacturers. They're they, they, they not perfect either. So if we don't catch it, then it'll pretty much fall on us. Wow. So, you know, I guess just like anything else, you just don't put something on the truck and... And, and get in and go there's there's a lot of other work to go along with it rental car turn backs what are those uh, when you go to a rental car the rental cars keep the car no more than about 25 or 30 thousand miles and when they get that about that many miles on it they will send it back to the auction and that's when we bring in new rental cars back into them so in the manufacturers usually they are send all the new cars to the the new upcoming products to the rental car fleet due to the fact that a lot of people are renting the rental cars and 
it's it like self-advertisement for them. So them are turnbacks. Okay, gotcha. So we got a chance to, to listen at you there, and you, the truck sounds amazing. Let's talk about some of the, the custom aspects of the of the truck. I've seen the truck for the last couple of years, and I've seen a lot of folks really in, enjoy it and come up and, and, and talk with you about it. So tell me about some of the, the custom aspects of it. Uh, like I say, it's a glider, it's a glider. Uh, the motor's been painted, poured out, painted. The master color of the truck. Everything up under the hood is painted. Eight inch Dynaflex chrome stacks, carbon fiber paint job. The floors in the inside painted match the outside of the truck. Uh, got a little music in the truck. Dashboard been painted. Me and the wife, you know, the, the, my drivers, we all, everybody had input on how they wanted to do it. Why don't you tell me about uh, how you've done at some of the shows, you so, uh, and how long you've been showing it, and some of the uh, rewards or awards that you've gotten. Uh, the first show I ever went to was three years ago. I went to the um, Fitzgerald Rodriguez show, and uh, my first show I went to, and I was uh, really was just going to a show to see what it was like. And I was Put it in what Washington, Washington show, and uh, the product class group said, "No, you're not gonna put that truck in Washington show." And I was like, "Why not? I don't know nothing about showing no truck." And they was, she was like, "No, that truck is too beautiful to get in the, um, the Washington show class. We're gonna move you on up to the big boy class." So I'm like, uh, "Okay, I'm kind of scared." So I didn't know what to do. So when I won the fifth year show, I qualified to go to the national championship out in Dallas, Texas, and I was like, oh wow. Because I really didn't think I had a truck, a, a, a show truck to really compete with some of the big boys on the show circuit. And it, it shocked me when I made it. So when I won that fifth year show, I 
qualified to go to Dallas Tennessee two years ago, and I came to third place in Dallas. So we was pretty much, okay, we ended the winning now, so I was all in. So after that, I went to um, Kentucky two years ago, to Madison, Kentucky, and I won best of show there, and I was like, oh, gosh, here we go. And that shocked me too when I won Bush the show there and I got first place there and um, left there, went to 75, picked up a 75 crown shot, picked up a couple of trophies there. And we kind of held off the rest of the last year due to the fact I had, you know, my mom and my daddy had got sick and both of them kind of passed away. The reason why we didn't make it Dallas last year is we came back this year and yeah, went back up to Max again and we came with a bunch of, bunch of first place trophies and Went on down to 75 Chrome Shop again, you know, it was a big hit. Went to Fitzgerald again, and we got first place in Fitzgerald this year. And, you know, now we over in the Shell, having a wonderful time in the Shell. I mean, real wonderful time. And, you know, I'm, I'm just loving the show circuit just because all the people you get to really meet. I mean, you meet a lot of drivers, and everybody just take pride in their ride, and I'm the same person. That's the reason why I love it so much as being in a show circuit. Well, that's great. So so basically you're telling me you put together a truck, really didn't think much of it, and you, you went around collecting up trophies and whatnot, winning everything. Chris, I promise you, when we put this truck together, I really did not think it was going to be the bigger hit that it is right now. I just thought it was just something, just a self-advertisement, you know, a little bit of the company, because a lot of people don't know when you roll up in a dealership with a truck, what, with your truck looking clean and nice and everything, a lot of times them dealers don't check them cars. Because they feel like if you take pride in your ride, you're going to take pride in their cars. So, like I say, I really did not think I had a show truck like this and this caliber to compete with everybody. And it's really just been blowing me away, and I love it. It's a great attitude to have because you're not going in with any preconceived notions on what you think. Uh, you should uh, get back out of the, the work that you put in. So uh, that's something that, that can't be taken away. Uh, so that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I never went into it thinking that, oh, I got to get this, I got to get that. I still don't even think about it now. I, I don't even still don't even think about that part now. I go to the show because we all love it. I mean, my wife loves it, my boys love it, my drivers love it. My father-in-law, he loves coming to it. We just like coming around to the truck shows and just showing off what we as a company and as a family have all put together and just, just, just put something together that we like. And we glad that everybody else likes it too. That's great. So if a guy wants to get into hauling cars and everything, and you know, given the experience that you have now, what kind of advice would you give a guy if he's like, you know, he has that same interest, he loves cars, he wants to transport them. What's your advice? I would tell anybody to try to start with the smallest amount of cars as possible first. If you don't have nobody to teach you, just start with the smallest amount of cars first. Be patient. You can't get frustrated because I will tell you that sometimes I did get frustrated like, I, man, I just, just, it ain't going the way I wanted to go. And you got to have a lot of patience with yourself and, and and be ready. I'm a trust and tell me, be ready to have a, a big pocketbook because if you don't have any car haul experience starting off, man, the insurance company is going to be, the insurance is going to be real, real high on you. Okay, I hear that. So, what were some of the frustrations? You know, yeah, you did say that uh, having to, you know, walk and find the cars in the heat and, and maybe, you know, some other things. But what what are some frustrations that were going to jump out right out of guy? Trying to put a car on a truck and you, 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 you don't have the correct spacing on it yet. And when I say spacing, each car, has, each car goes on this truck like a puzzle. So if you put eight or nine different cars out there and you don't put the right car on the truck at the right spot, you're going to have to take that car down, unstrap it, take that car down, and put the next car to go on that spot to make that spot, make that car fit on the truck. The way you can, so you can either get your height down, 
or to be able to load all your cars on your truck to be able to complete that whole load. So that's why I'm saying you might need to have a lot of patience because sometimes it will get to you, especially when you're outside, when it's hot, or like me, I don't like the cold that much. So if you're outside and you're up north and you got 10 degrees or 20 degree weather and fingers are freezing, you know, toes about froze, and the one the, the, the rubber just getting to you, you sometimes you get very frustrated. You be like, man, you know what the heck with this? But if you love doing it, like my father always told me, if you love doing something, you'll do it whether you get paid or not. Yeah, I hear you. I definitely agree. Tell me about the business and the, the growth of the business, what you currently do now, the number of trucks you run, and, and, and where you go. Um, we run eight trucks in the fleet. We're not all car hauling. We, we get off into the refrigerator freight side of the company, too. We pretty much run up and down the East Coast. We run snowboarders out of Detroit, out of Pennsylvania, back down to Florida. We haul new cars out of the rail yard. Out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, we run out of West Point, we run out of the ports, out of Brunswick, Georgia, the Bentley contract too that we haul out of Atlanta. We haul a bunch of cars out of Manheim, we haul for drive time, and on the refrigerated freight side, we pretty much haul it chickens up north, beef back down south. 10 4, I'm, I'm happy to hear that success. They you wanted to uh, start another little venture on the company. That was her little um, passion that she wanted to do. So um, she kicked me in the butt and said, that's where we're going to next. And uh, sometimes you got to follow the, follow the lady at the hall sometimes, too. Stand for Well, I, she's sitting next to you there. Uh, hopefully she's not camera shy or radio shy there. Uh, as far as uh, wanting to uh, do this venture, this new venture into uh, you know hauling reefers, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and, and tell us why you found that interesting? Hello, my name is Stacy, and the reason why we went into the reefer side, we wanted to try something new and get our company a little bit more exposure. We're well known in the car hauling industry, so we thought about the reefer business, and wow, it's a beautiful thing. We love both of our venture. Car hauling will be our first love, but the reefer side is looking very nice to us. And we like to be versatile, so this was something new for us. We talked about it, we agreed upon it, and Eric and I are just doing what we can to make it another part of our company. That's great. Very straightforward. And again, with that kind of uh, thought process, uh, you will be successful that way. We're hoping, and it looks looking really good on both the car hauling side and on the reefer side. We love being, we love having both divisions. We love it. The enthusiasm I hear in your voice, uh, that's great. Tell me how you've got involved. Well, Chris, I met Eric about nine years ago, and he was doing the car hauling, and um, started driving around with him to different spots, helping him out, loading the cars, driving the cars to him so he could put them on the truck. And one day, he and I were just talking, and I was like, I really want to do this. I really want to get involved in this because I enjoyed working with him along his side at the different places we would go together, um, traveling. So we went in and got a few more trucks. And what we do now is he, he works with the drivers and I do everything in-house, meaning I do all the administrative aspects of the company, keeping the company running through a uh, contract that Eric might attain. I do payrolls, I do the paperwork. I do all the billing, I do all the invoices, and then Eric deals with the drivers and he does all their, um, getting all the contracts that we need and the load work for the drivers. So about eight, nine years ago, he introduced it to me and wow, there's nothing else I'll think about. I love doing this with him. We love doing it together. And doing the truck shows together has been a plus being in the trucking industry. We see so much through the, uh, the exposure of going to truck shows and getting involved into um, the truck shows. 
and meeting the people that we meet are friends for life. Can't really talk on the radio well if there's something beeping in the car. It sounds like I'm gonna blow up or something. Yeah, I hear it. I don't, it was just squealing real loud on the radio. My uh, my battery light did come on, so yeah, probably the alternator getting ready to take a dump. So uh, I think uh, I think I'll still cruise it back to uh, back to the show. Whatever you need, I got you, so. I mean, I got We got jump boxes. We, we can at least get it on the truck or whatever we need to do to get you back. You're like, remember that one time we were doing that rolling TV interview and it turned into a rolling uh, repair video? Uh huh.
nice to see you make it down this way and uh, see how that act, uh, how that wild mole trailer works. Uh, so, welcome to the Sunny's Lord. I appreciate you for letting me come visit your hometown, Chris. Yeah, four. Hey, so uh, it's uh, it's a couple months later, and uh, over there at Super Rigs, you ended up uh, winning Best of Show. Tell me, how did that feel? What was going through your mind at the time when uh, they called your name for that? And now, the winner of the 36th annual Shell Rotella Super Rigs, winning 50,000 My Miles Matter reward points and $10,000. Truck number 19, Eric Charner Sr. When they called my name, Chris, it, just, it really took me for a shock and surprise. I had to just turn around and just look straight to the sky like I, like I said all the time. I never really seen it coming. Never even really seen me even being in the calendar. Uh, my daddy always visioned that when I was a little boy. He always like I had the, the calendar on his toolbox. And he used to tell me back when I was growing up, he said, one day you're going to be in there. And I just... Like I said, I never did believe it, never even thought it was going to even happen. That, that, that wasn't even nowhere in my train of thought. So when I won, I just, like I said, I just, I just bust out and start crying. I was just so happy. Yeah, you know, I, I saw you there, uh, you and uh, Stacy and the rest of the family there. You know, what was, uh, what was her thoughts? You know, she's not in the truck right now, of course, it's a couple months later, but what was her thoughts on the deal? She was very happy. She couldn't even... She couldn't believe it either, and still, sometimes we can sit around and talk about it, and she still can't believe it. She'd be like, babe, you know we won a uh, Super Rig? I was like, yeah, I never would have thought it would have happened. And she was like, wow. That's, I mean, it's still, sometimes it still is a wow to us. And these are Best of Show Junior Awards. Oh, Bryson, every time I, we, he talk about it, he got his little trophy sitting on his dresser in his room. He always say, I'm a champion. That's right. You know, what a memory for everyone, uh, including the boys there. That's awesome. You're down here in uh, Florida uh, picking up a load of cars there. Uh, where are you going with those cars? We're headed back up to Stockbridge, Georgia, um, right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm um, going to drop this load off. Ten, boy. Well, you don't mind if I uh, show up up there uh, near ATL there where you, uh, where you live and get a peek at what's going on and uh, see how you get the cars off there, right? Uh, no problem, Chris. I want you to come up there and, you know, show the public how to call the nation. You know, you, they've they seen you load me loading up and they can see me unloading. They can see how to call the nation do our job. 10-4. Well, I'll see you in a couple days. All righty, Chris.